Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special episode of the Life Science Report, a podcast from Back Bay Life Science Advisors. My name is Mavra Nasser, and I am a senior consultant here at Back Bay with the strategy consulting team, and we're based in Boston. Today, I'm also joined by some of my favorite colleagues at Back Bay, Rachel Thompson and Kyle O'Neill. And we also have Brendan Wang on the line. Um, Rachel is an associate with the banking team, whereas Kyle and Brendan uh, are both on the consulting side. Kyle is a consultant and Brendan is an engagement manager. Um, so given our diverse backgrounds and really the path we took to strategy advising and banking, we wanted to share our unique perspectives on navigating a career in this industry. So I'll just get right into it uh, with Brendan, actually. Um, maybe you could tell us what is life science consulting or strategy consulting? Is it how often are you saying the word strategy and leveraging and circling back? Is it is it really like that or is it different? Every minute of every day, Mavra. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think for those who are kind of new to the world of consulting, it can seem uh, kind of nebulous, but I think like at its core, I mean, really what we help people do is answer sort of business questions that they might have or that they might not have the data um, to answer, right? And we we help support them in that. And so at Back Bay, I mean, we focus exclusively in the life sciences. So biopharma, med device, diagnostics type uh, companies. Um, and then uh, with regards to the types of questions that we help answer, um, they're pretty vast, but uh, a good chunk of what we do is in the partnering and transaction space. So helping small uh, biopharma companies think about, you know, what's the right time to get acquired by another company or what is the valuation for their company? How do they position themselves optimally to maximize transaction value? Those sorts of things. Um, how do we bring this new product to market? So it's a, a lot of those types of um, kind of questions, but it all stems from, you know, how do we do X, Y, or Z with the drug or device that we're uh, developing and uh, kind of goes from there. So. Rachel, what, because it's a back base unique. And that was one thing I remember, like when I was trying to figure out where to go, looking at our website, we have a backing component. Um, do you want to tell our listeners how that is different or how, what, how does that work? The, 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 um, kind of the marriage of those two teams, like why is that important and unique to back Bay? Sure. Yeah. So just as a basis, um, the investment banking at its core is helping companies identify capital, whether that be in the public markets or um, through partnerships or an acquisition, some sort of transaction. Mm -hmm. Here at Back Bay, as Brennan was talking about, um, the consulting team advises a lot on licensing or partnerships. Um, we help execute those transactions. So we help companies um, find a partner or identify a target that they want to buy. And then we help execute on that. And we work alongside the consulting team who is helping um, lead a lot of that primary research and due diligence um, to help with that execution. Um, and maybe I'll turn it to Kyle now, going in a stepwise fashion. Um, so Brendan kind of really nicely described uh, life science and strategy consulting. I'm just curious, for me, I don't know what it really was when I started um, looking into a career as a consulting as a career for you, Kyle, at UPenn. Did you know what consulting was and how did you choose consulting as a career? I think initially, like a lot of other people, I didn't really know what consulting was and since a lot of us at Back Bay have science backgrounds, you know, we were thinking about PhD, MD, sort of the hard sciences. But I think over time uh, and seeing what other people go on to do from UPenn and elsewhere, there's an interesting opportunity to blend both science and business, uh, mm -hmm. specifically at Back Bay, but also across a lot of consultancies as well. And I think that's what really drew me or what really drew me to Back Bay was the intersection of entrepreneurship, science, and business all together. As Brendan and Rachel have talked to you nicely already, we work quite a lot on partnering and helping some of those small companies advance, you know, really important scientific advances to get to patients at the end of the day. And 
you know, I think we all really like where we sit at the intersection of science and business here. Right. Brendan, was it similar for you? Did you kind of know you always wanted to go into consulting in undergrad? Brendan's from Dartmouth, where I did my PhD. Um, so my calculus was very different from like an undergrad experience. How was it for you, Brendan? Yeah. I mean, I would say like from all of the um, people that wound up in consulting and then all everybody that I've interviewed over the last you know seven years that I've been doing this, um, is that I probably was a, a bit on the earlier side with respect to, you know, figuring out that consulting was of interest because kind of in my freshman, sophomore year, I, I figured out like, okay, I'm taking all these lab classes as a chemistry major. So like I'm taking all these lab classes and this is not the most fun, um, you know, being in the lab, but like at, at its core, like I love science and, um, you know, wanted to, uh have a career that centered around it just mm -hmm. the bench was not for me so i think like partway through freshman year is when i kind of figured that out um i did like a lab-based internship freshman summer and then basically like in all of my downtime which was a lot because i didn't actually have any skills in the lab <laughs> um uh I would look into like consulting and read up and, and there's a, a ton of like online resources where you can um, figure that out. But I, I think probably the most useful resource was just using my um, school's alumni network, mm -hmm. figuring out who is in a consulting firm. And I was you know interested only in the life sciences. So who's at a life science consulting firm and trying to set up calls with them to say like, hey, I'm trying to learn more about this. Can you talk to me about it? Because I don't know a whole lot beyond you know, what I'm reading online and it kind of grew from there. So. Yeah, I would say the alumni network is one of the best resources. So I found Pac Bay through Brendan here. So I would definitely say that going to your alumni network is one of the key things for any candidate, just trying to learn more about the industry and not just consulting. Um, I would also say that if you are um, at a school that doesn't have a very large um, network of industries or place roles that you're interested in reaching out to like I know that uh, we all have taken just intro calls where it's not mm -hmm. necessarily an interview it's kind of like you're interviewing us just to learn about what we do and how we got where we are kind of similar to this conversation we're having here on the podcast but it's yeah. it's always good to show interest that way too if you don't find uh, an alumni that you want to reach out to I mean LinkedIn I would say LinkedIn is great like yeah. if somebody told me early on that instead of just directly going to websites, like generally speaking, and not following up or finding people on LinkedIn, I, that would have saved me so much time. Um, so that always, I felt like the hit rate or response rate for just people willing to talk to you and just for even for 30 minutes uh, was a very encouraging and a very good way to learn more about the company. Um. I'm going to actually go back to you, Rachel. I mean, how did, did you always know that you were going to go into banking? How did you get exposed to it and uh, choose banking? Sure. Yeah. So I always, um, going into college, I knew I wanted to work in the biotech industry. I wasn't really sure what that entailed, but I knew I was really interested in it. Um, so I was a biology major and then I had some internships in college that were more focused on uh, roles within the industry. Um, but I've, as Brendan mentioned, I quickly realized I was not interested in getting a PhD or doing anything in a lab or getting a medical degree. Um, and so I happened to get uh, another internship at an investment bank and really learn about um, the IPO process and how to value a company and all of that good stuff. And then was introduced to Back Bay and as we've talked about, was really interested in the integrated um, integrated model that we have here. So I, I definitely kind of stumbled upon it, um, but it was great happenstance. <laughs> nice. Um, so one thing that I was really worried about, well, when I started exploring jobs, like I, as a PhD student looking to transition from academia, Something that I wanted to learn quickly on is, do you need an internship experience or any kind of prior technical knowledge to get into consulting or banking, Rachel? Um, so do you require any of those experiences? Is that if you don't have it, you don't have like a foot in, maybe Kyle, I'll turn it to you. Is it an absolute requirement or could you still 
um, work in a you know entry level position at a consulting firm without experience. Speaking from my personal experience, I didn't have an internship in consulting or banking, and you know I think was able to transition my prior experiences nicely to joining Back Bay. I think, and we were all talking about this a little earlier, one of the key things we really look for is intellectual curiosity and interest in the biotech industry. A lot of us are reading the day-to-day news, what's going on. You know, There's an interesting company that does a deal in oncology. What's the mm-hmm. latest interesting data in neurology? And I think if you articulate your interest in the biotech industry and what's going on within it pretty well in the interview process, uh, that's a good indicator that you can transfer some of your scientific knowledge that you may have gained through undergrad coursework to the work we do in the day-to-day at Back Bay. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think what I found was just, you know, besides talking about my research experience, um, the other thing that kind of helped um, was I joined a consulting club and kind of talking about some of the other non-research related um, activities I had done to kind of showcase my interest in the industry. And that was really sufficient to 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 make up for the gap and not actually having done an internship over a summer uh, in a boutique consulting firm or for a biotech. Um, what about for banking, Rachel? Did you do you think that's kind of a limiting factor if you get a candidate and they don't haven't worked at a biotech or have had haven't had prior banking experience? Yeah, so I I definitely don't think that that is a huge limiting factor. I think that we're always looking for someone that has an interest on in the finance or banking side, but also has intellectual curiosity in the sciences. A lot of what we do is not just numbers and Excel spreadsheet. We do look into the science and the clinical positioning and adjustable patient populations. So we do look a little bit more for um, interest in the sciences. Um, but we we don't expect people to come in having all of that experience. Um, so yeah, you I, don't, I think you don't one want of to run a DCF for you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <Okay>. I mean that's <laughs> great if they can, <laughs> but we don't. We definitely don't expect that. Um, and I think making sure that they have true interest in the sciences is more important than knowing the line items for a DCF um, for Back Bay. Um, and as I think Kyle was talking, one of my favorite interview questions is asking about: Are there any deals in the space that have piqued your interest? Because even if you haven't had direct work experience, you have done your homework and looked into what we do day to day. Um, and that shows real curiosity. So now's the point where if you're still listening to this podcast, we should do a shameless plug for our white papers and other podcasts to show you've also <laughs> done your homework on Back Bay. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you can go to our website, and there's a couple of great white papers from Kyle O'Neill on cell and gene therapy, and he's been in the news too, Boston Globe. I, I think, um, like the other, just just so you understand at least like how I think about um, previous internship experiences, it's not like, oh, do you do, does this person have a hard skill? Yeah, okay, hard skills. Obviously, I mean, they can be helpful if you have them, mm-hmm. but it's almost like an internship in anything in the sciences or the life sciences, or if you don't have an internship and you've done research at school, um, like that as an indicator that you're interested enough that you are acting on it and doing something with some of your time. Um, And right, I think we all know now, um, nowadays anyway, that like people are I would say, you know, it, a product of your environment, like it, a lot of stuff comes down to, do you have access and the opportunities to things? And sometimes the answer is no. And so the question is like, okay, in those, uh, in those cases, um, how did you make use of your time and your interests? Where did you invest your, your time? Was it in reading articles on biopharma deals and stuff? I mean, not, you know, but I, th- I think you guys kind of know where I'm going. I agree with your point, Brendan, and I think another another good question that we like to ask, um, whether it be someone that's coming from a PhD or has class related project experience, like experience, or as you said in your free time is reading publications on things. Can you concisely summarize what the problem was 
the key findings and kind of what it means, like how it changes out an outlook on something. Um, and being able to do that in a concise, clear way is helpful. Okay. Yeah, many of our clients have technical backgrounds, but a lot of them um, don't. They're like, uh, well, a lot of them are, you know, like myself, like interested in the sciences, but, um, you know, didn't do a PhD or have like a super technical um, background, right? But like, can you explain things such that they can understand it? Like, I, I would say the majority of our job is like communi figuring out what to communicate. And then once you figure that out and do the research and the analysis to figure out like, what the story is for for the client it's like okay well how do we con convey that in a concise and direct manner so they buy into that so yeah um so given our diverse background and path to strategy advising and banking we wanted to share a perspective on navigating a career in the industry um and today we wanted to talk about um the actual interview process um maybe i'll turn it to you kyle um what as the resident case study expert, I should say, uh, and case study being one of the key technical parts for really any consulting interview, whether it's life science or not, what advice would you give uh, our listeners on how to prepare for those interviews? I think I'll start with a pragmatic few tips and then circle on to a more circuitous answer after. Uh, but at the outset, I'll say, you know, I didn't love casing as a candidate, but I've come to understand it more over the years as an interviewer. I think some things you should definitely do are, one, say the case is interesting. Given a lot of cases people are given or are giving in the interview process or projects they've actually worked on in the past and showing some interest in that I think is valuable. I think taking some time to gather your thoughts on the prompt and set up a structure is also really helpful because uh, the interviewer is ultimately there to help you find the answer and help you course correct. I'll think, or I say the one thing that maybe people make a mistake with a little too much is rambling on as they try and explain something. You know, know in the back of your head that the interviewer has probably done this case 30, 40, 50 times and you don't want to be talking aimlessly about a problem they're trying to navigate you to the answer on. And all of those tips to say, you know, at the end of the day, a case interview is attempting to simulate what a real life client meeting or experience is like. And that's what yeah. people at Back Bay are doing every day on a day to day basis. You have to be able to work with a client to solve their critical business problem, which they're pretty passionate about, and they're going to give you some of the information you need, you you may have to find some of it yourself. And that's sort of what a case interview is simulating, how you'll react if something goes wrong or if someone's pressure testing the way you're thinking about answering their problem. Yeah, I would also add um, just that, I mean, practice the case with somebody that w that's really key as you're preparing for it, whether it's a friend or a sibling, I don't know, just over phone, in person, if you can practice the cases and a lot of companies have posted mock um, case studies so you could use those as a resource um, my first case interview was not great so I hope that doesn't happen but also be prepared that you know maybe the first ever case study may not go as well as planned but don't get discouraged just you know practice and and uh, when you're doing the case study um, other than what Kyle mentioned I also think it's important to kind of find a balance of keeping the the person who's giving the case updated with what you're thinking and executing and at the same time if you make a mistake or two not get too frazzled like kyle said um just kind of course correct you know, take a minute or two to put yourself together it is you know uh, anxiety inducing but you don't want to just kind of unravel <laughs> um because i think that's one thing where i at least i look out for like are they able to get back on their feet, even if they've made a couple of math mistakes, which definitely on Back Bay, we don't, you know, we don't ding you for that um, at all. I don't know, Brendan or Rachel, if there's anything specific you want to add, or Rachel, maybe I'll turn it to you first. For the banking side, do you do you do case interviews or any kind of technical exercises to evaluate students, candidates? Yeah, sure. I guess I would just also add that don't forget that you can always ask for assumptions. If you think you need a number, we don't expect you to just know 
um, the incidence of a disease um, off the top of your head. So don't be afraid to ask or pause and think about what numbers you might need um, mm -hmm. and check in with your interviewer. And then um, in regard to banking, we don't, we're not quite as structured in our process as the consulting team is. Um, so if we're following the undergrad pathway and working with the consulting team, sometimes we'll use a case in our first round interview just to understand how you think. And a lot of the work we do kind of does match up with the case, at least a, in our first round case and how you think through things. Um, but other than that, we don't have a sh super structured technical um, interview. Sometimes we'll ask if if you're more experienced on the finance side, what, how do you run a DCF? Or like, how do you think about pulling a set of comps or something like that? But it's not quite as um, structured. Okay. And then maybe like I'll turn this to Brendan, given that he's probably interviewed the most people your question is a good one, which is um, like, what do we look for? And I, I think, again, it's worth reiterating, like the case interview for all that everybody in consulting talks about it, it is not the be all end all for the interview. I mean, it is one input and one data point that we use when we're evaluating candidates. And we don't expect flawless execution um, of the math, or if it's not a very math intensive case, if it's more of a qualitative one, mm. um, right? We're just kind of generally looking for like, can you break a problem down? Um, do you think about it in a logical way? And can you walk us through your thought mm -hmm. process? Um, uh, again, like not to the point where you're rambling on and on and on, but you know, we do want to understand like how you think about the problem and how you get from, um, you know, where you are to where you need to go and, and, and all the steps in between. So I, I think what you said, Mavra, at the very beginning is, is like, don't unravel. It's like, yeah, that, that, that's for me, it's like, don't implode. Like, yeah, it, it, it is totally okay to, um, make mistakes. It's as Rachel was saying, ask lots of questions. There's no, I think the last thing that we want to do and we try to avoid it, but it still slips in is like use lingo or technical terms that, you don't know, but then that, you know, become a barrier to understanding or performing well in the case. If, if you don't, you know, if, if you don't, uh, if you don't know a um, acronym or, or something, just, just ask, uh, we probably didn't mean to use it. So. Yeah, I agree. And then I do want to ask like, you know, case studies, one component, you'll, you'll probably as a, as a candidate have to do some fit interviews, group interviews, talk one-on-one -on -one with senior uh, team members. Um, it, and as you said, case study is not the end all be all. Is it be all end all? You said the wrong thing, I think. End all <laughs> be all. End all be all. Um, it's not everything. It, what other skills, uh, and this is for you, Brendan, um, do you look for in a candidate when you're evaluating them? Like, what is a successful candidate? Or I guess another way to phrase it, phrase it is who gets an offer, um, looking at the totality of their performance. Yeah, I think it goes, for me, uh, a successful candidate is one that like really shows that intellectual curiosity. So like, again, it and you, intellectual curiosity comes in so many different flavors mm -hmm. and forms. And it's not predicated on having done an internship. It's not predicated, it, it, you know, it's not predicated on having gone to a specific school or ha having a certain GPA. I mean, I think like we generally use some thresholds to give us a general indication that like, yeah, mm -hmm. this person could probably handle this or yes, this person could, would probably be interested in this type of work. But at the end of the day, um, it, it all just comes down, I think, to do you have a good reason for like why you're interested in going specifically into life science consulting? Um, because you know, it, it, it's what we do is I, what I think we do at back Bay is fairly broad, but in the grand scheme of like all the different career paths you could choose, it's fairly niche. Yeah. Um, and so mm -hmm. like we're, we want people, I want people, um, to join the firm who are like interested in staying for, the long haul, like a, a couple years at, at least, if not longer. Um, mm -hmm. And 
And so the people that want to stay for a long time, I think, are the people that naturally find this material really interesting. Do you ask questions or is everything like a question and, you know, one sentence response like during the the interview? Or are there like, you know, do you ask questions back to us? Um, do you share interesting experiences and weave, you know, your experiences with with what we do and show an interest in, you know, in our in our company specifically? I mean, I think those are all um yeah, good good indicators to me. So it, it's really driving home that that curiosity. Uh, what about you, Kyle? Anything else you look for that Brendan hasn't mentioned uh, in candidates who, um, or what what do successful candidates do? Do you think that kind of sets them apart from the from the rest? I think Brendan covered it pretty nicely, but. You know, for me, what stands apart is the demonstrated interest, uh, you know, communicating well with the team. I think that's really important to show that you're passionate about Back Bay and want to join this group of people. And all that to say, you know, for me, I think intellectual curiosity is very important. Passionate, mm -hmm. passionate for biotech is very important. Rationale for why Back Bay is something we ask pretty frequently. And then... You know, can you talk about the space leveraging all your experiences, you know, pretty well and sort of sum that as to why science and business connect? Mm -hmm. I think if you're able to do all those things, you're a pretty strong fit for Back Bay. And then, you know, we have the tough problem of splitting hairs sometimes between different candidates who do very well. So um, given our diverse backgrounds and really path to strategy advising and banking, we wanted to share our perspective on navigating a career in the industry. Um, specifically, you know, you've done the interview, you've, you have a couple of offers. How do you pick a firm? How do you pick a place you're going to be likely for a couple of years or longer? Um, so I will actually start with Rachel. Um, Rachel, how did you or why did you choose to work at the banking site and at Back Bay? Sure. Um, so what initially interested me in Back Bay was the integrated model. So getting to work alongside the consulting team um, and how that translated into deal execution, I thought was really unique and interesting. And I thought for someone coming out right out of school, it would be very cool to be able to learn about both sides of that business. Um, and then through the interview process, um, I really enjoyed the people that I talked to and really liked everyone. But yeah, I really enjoyed the people that I met and I liked that it was a flat structure. And so I knew that I would be able to work closely with managing directors and ask their questions. And that even though the banking team is a bit smaller, the consulting team was always available and offering help. Um, so the people is what sold me. Um, I, I would agree. I like the, I cannot underestimate the comfort of being able to or feeling like you can ask a question and not, you know, feel judged or oh, that was a stupid current question. Why did I ask the MD this? I think from like, honestly, from day one or two, <laughs> I felt like, you know, I, I could just ask very simple questions, uh, questions that I knew my other team members may know the answer to, but I don't as a new hire. And that is definitely key in feeling like you belong to a place. Um, what would you say, Brendan, moving to you, uh, when you came to Back Bay, what, you know, why did you choose Back Bay or what do you think really separated Back Bay from some of the other boutique consulting firms um, that, in the area? Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, my background is a little bit uh, different than, than some folks on this call, but at our firm, which is, you know, I, I came from another uh, consulting firm. Uh, after spending two years there. Um, for me, I think the two things that really cemented uh, wanting to come to Back Bay versus, uh, you know, other uh, sort of peer firms was um, two things. So one, uh, content, um, and then the second sort of firm size and the, the, you know, it kind of blends with culture a bit. So uh, on the first, so on content, um, you know, before I was focused pretty specifically on uh, pricing and market access strategy for um, mid, but mostly late stage and marketed products. And I, I think 
but just my own curiosities were a little bit um, broader than that. And so I didn't see myself as wanting to become like a deep, deep expert on that area. And I kind of wanted to understand a little bit more um, across the whole you know, drug development spectrum uh, and timeline, like different parts of that process. And so, um, you know, uh, Back Bay is great because, you know, a good good chunk of our work focuses on that um, transaction partnering strategy for like early stage companies. But there's a very sizable chunk of our work that is like so random, right? Like in terms of clients um, and like the types of questions mm -hmm. that they ask, um, like a, a good, you know, third of our project work is stuff that like, I never thought I would be um working on right it could mm -hmm. do you have a good example uh okay you're gonna put me on the spot, put him on the um, spot. i do yes. I, so i do have a good example so like for um for a big pharma company they had acquired another company and their clinical trial like organization and function was looking to integrate like the company who they acquired their clinical trial right they each ran their own clinical trials as, as separate companies now they had to merge it into one and so it was you know some question of like whose practices do we keep and which ones do we not keep and then who is going to run certain things so that was a very like i don't know management consulting-esque um project which we generally don't do because we we usually stay a little bit more uh a lot closer to like the like corporate strategy and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So that, but it's a chance to go a little bit outside of your comfort zone and stretch um, your thinking a bit. And so, you know, I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, the other sort of going back to Mavra, your initial question on, you know, why back base. Mm -hmm. So the first was content. And then the second was company size. So the previous firm that I was at had about a thousand people ish globally. Um, it, you spread across 30 offices globally. And, um, you know, I had interned previously at a, another boutique life science consulting firm. Um, and I really loved that like small office uh, culture and vibe because, you know, you get to know, you know, 15, 20, 25 people like really, really well. You work with each other all the time um, on, on projects. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a lot more like, homey uh and i'm i'm a homebody so uh for me like I, I i knew after two years at a large firm that um it made sense for me um to to go down to a boutique so back bay checked both of those boxes very easily and what about you kyle like was there I, definitely for me and i'll get into it shortly and then turn to you like i feel like when you're evaluating firms like everybody probably has some sort of should have a pros or cons list or something like that, or some sort of internal calculus of like where and why for me coming from like grad school, it was a bit different. I would say in the sense that there were certain things I definitely wanted um, in a company or wherever I was going to go that may be different from somebody coming right out of undergrad. So I felt like I'd done my time in grad school. So I didn't want to do the grind at, you know, maybe like a, um, a firm where I knew it was going to be very long hours consistently. So, you know, quality of life, work-life balance were very important. Um, so that was number one, I would say. And really to get a, a feel of that, you just have to talk to people. Like the way I judged it, honestly, I had an in-person group interview and, you know, Brendan was there. And Rachel, I don't remember. I don't know if you were there or not, but like, a couple of other people from the consulting team. And I, they looked happy. Like I just felt like they were satisfied. And I, I think I talked to one of my colleagues very bluntly, but other than that, that was my gut check. Okay. These people actually look like they like working and they also seem to like each other. So like, trust your gut. I would say when you're in group interviews, like how is the team interacting with each other? That is just as important. Like, do they seem happy and, you know, amiable, amicable? Um, I think that was a big one. And then, the other was honestly more also related on quality of life. Like I, I have a dog. I had a dog. Just it was me and my dog at that time. And honestly, being able to spend time with him and people understanding that was also really important. Um, so if you have a pet or children, family, like also trying to 
see like is are people who are working at the firm you know do they have families or loved ones and they get to spend time with them like that's also to me that was important so I, I wanted to make sure as I was looking at firms and talking to people I could get a sense of that um as well just a caveat that I would add to is I think a challenge of everything work-life balance I think has improved because we're on zoom now but also yeah. a challenge of having that gut check of are people happy do they like each other is a lot harder to do over zoom so you might have to um be a little bit more blunt like Mavra said and talk to people more specifically about it because you were interviewing in person and it, it was much easier to kind of yeah. get that sense I think sure. too no that's that's very true because sometimes um, you're just zoom drained and it's not yeah. that you hate your job you just are tired of being on a zoom call <laughs> Rachel hates her job. No. <laughs> um, been on a lot of Zoom calls lately, Rachel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this this could have no, been I, an I email. Think that, <laughs> I, I think the gut check thing is an important uh is an important one. Um and, and the other thing too is like we're we're all kind of like talking about what is valuable to us. I think it's really important to reflect when you're doing that decision making, like what is valuable to me. And I would say like my values have changed a lot since I, you know, mm -hmm. uh graduated from college versus you know, seven years later now, like um, I didn't like for me at, at my first job, like work-life balance uh, w was important, but it wasn't like the number one thing for me. Like for me, content like ruled the day. Mm -hmm. So like um, it was really important that I got international health, like healthcare system exposure and like my previous firm, like that is what they did really well. Um, and so you know, that was a big driver for me and that, that changed over time and that's okay. Uh, and, but it also meant that I, you know, wanted to change firms as a result of that. And then finally, Kyle, I don't want to miss you. Um, was there anything that was, you know, part of your calculus, whether it was back bay specific or general in helping you choose back bay? I'll start with the fun because I think you gave a nice intro to it, Mavra. My First strong memory of Back Bay was probably being in an information session at Penn and seeing the Back Bay video. Uh, tribute to those who know what I'm talking about. Uh, I think that speaks very nicely to the culture and what Back Bay is all about. And then the second thing I remember from that interview session is going back and forth with one of our current managing directors about Twitter and following biotech news. So, you know, again, it just seemed like a down to earth, happy group of people who are excited about what they did and wanted to share it with the world. And I think something else that stood out to me and was very important to me was the science aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, on the consulting side, all three of our managing directors have their PhDs. And though uh, I like to say I turned to the dark side before I ever made it through my PhD, you know, I think it speaks to the type of work we do. And oftentimes we get to do deep dives into the science that I find particularly enjoyable and among my favorite projects we do here. Mm -hmm. I do want to talk about one thing specifically that gets thrown out thrown out a lot not just by i would say all companies and that's culture um i'm gonna put rachel in the hot seat like what do you if i were to ask you to define back bay culture what it, how would you define it i think that we all get along really well and enjoy spending time with each other which is important in terms of giving feedback and executing on projects and sometimes when you have to work longer hours than you want to um it keeps the attitude more positive mm -hmm. um so yeah i think that we are we're pretty open and um enjoy spending time with each other and then i also think it's a pretty flat structure which is different than um other investment banks or the I would say kind of expected culture of investment mm -hmm. banks, which I appreciate. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, it's kind of an open door policy. Uh, we can always go ask questions, whether it's a managing director or a consultant that is working on a different project that I haven't had a chance to work with yet or something like that. So it's always um, appreciated. Um, that people are able and willing to help out. Even I would say like when, People have a, a slower day or something. Sometimes someone will offer like, oh, do you have a task that I can complete within the next day or so that I can help out on, which is um, which is great. Yeah, I would agree. I would say it, it's culture is so important, but it's also so hard to um, measure or, or determine when you're interviewing. Like people will say this place is a great culture and it's 
I would say like it took me a while to me culture can be very nebulous because it's it's just hard to determine what it is and I would say having been at Back Bay I've had a better understanding of it what our culture is than when I was looking at firms or trying to think what to pick at that time it was just like what we've been talking about do I like these people or not honestly but I would say since then it's we've something that I've been thinking about a lot what our culture is and there's been a couple of internal discussions on 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 uh, 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 on that as well which I think speaks to Back Bay's um, inclusive environment where we kind of have these open discussions internally whether it's diversity equity inclusion whether it's celebrating certain holidays in communicating internally about them or uh, when it comes to certain moments of significance uh, sending corporate messages. I think we've, since I've been at Back Bay, grown so much there and it's kind of feels good to be a part of that. Um, and hopefully it, it stays that way. Um, I'll turn it to Brendan for a bit. Like, is there anything you want to add about culture or, or um, how your thinking about it has changed? Oh, before I turn it to you, actually the right word. One thing I, I've, I've been thinking about, about culture is how, and I define it now, not that I have a Mavra definition of it, but like what helps me determine um, is, is the place helping me bring the right emotional investment to my projects, like working there. Am I coming back to enjoying it? But like, am I, is it helping me bring the right energy to my teams and the workplace? So if it's not, it's likely either it's a toxic environment. Um, it, and if it is, you actually enjoy the project you're working on. You you tend to expand to other initiatives like Kyle has with thought leadership. It's it's a supportive workplace that doesn't just want you to finish a client's project, but helps you expand your professional skill set. So I think that is a, a metric I now use to determine um, how um, I feel about culture um, at Back Bay. Brendan, to you, <laughs> anything specific you want to add there? Um, and how you, you really evaluate culture. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, so it's a good question. I think everybody's going to have a, I mean, overlapping, but like still very distinct, um, I don't know, definitions and experiences of it. I, the first word that comes to my mind, um, is flexibility. And that comes in a couple of different varieties. So like one is, I mean, certainly now, um, we are much more flexible with like, um, like a, the working model. So like, you know, being in the office, uh, a couple days a week, but also having flexibility to work mm -hmm. from home if you need it, but also just flexibility in terms of, um, how do I spend my time and kind of, it, it, it kind of melds a little bit with, um, what you were just saying, Mavra, which is like the things that are important to me, mm -hmm. uh, are not just like executing and learning, mm -hmm. um, executing on projects and learning project content, but it's also like helping to build, uh, the back bay brand and the firm. Uh, so for me, like I have always found recruiting to be, um, really important. Uh, and I, I naturally gravitate towards like, I want to invest time in that. And so before I joined back bay, you know, there was a, a good five, the, you know, the first, I don't know, five or six years where we didn't really have a, an on-campus presence. Mm -hmm. Um, but there was a senior consultant at, at back Bay before I joined who was like, Oh, I, I think that it's really important. We build our brand awareness and we go and find really high achieving, um, students from, mm -hmm. um, universities. And we, we go in and, and, and we recruit on campus. Uh, and the senior team was like, cool. Yeah. I mean, we don't have a dedicated person to do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you want to carve out the time to do that, like, just let us know, what you need and we will figure out how to support you. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that type of, um, again, I don't flexible, permissive, uh, however you want to describe it, that type of environment lets people explore curiosities, um, outside of, you know, strictly consulting or investment banking, um, which I find very personally and professionally, um, just like very fulfilling. So. I would add on to that. Um, as I, I definitely agree on the flexibility as part of our culture, I think that um, 
that is also something we're trying to understand when we're interviewing people because that's not always um, a fit that everyone is going to like um, because sometimes like it gives us the opportunity to really explore what we're interested in and kind of dive in and take leadership but it's not always there's not always a process or a system for everything we want to do and so um I appreciate that we can speak up about what's important or what we think needs to be changed and we're actually heard and people um, will listen to what we have to say, but there are pros and cons to it. And I think that we all appreciate the flexibility and like that um, as no, a I, yeah. part of our culture. Yep. No, I completely agree with what you and Brendan both said. Well, thanks for joining the discussion. Uh, you can find myself, Rachel, Brendan, and Kyle on LinkedIn. Um, you know, feel free to reach out if you have questions about um, the industry, uh, questions about the recruiting process, or just generally about Biopharma and MedTech. Um, all of us here are very happy to help out. You can also learn more about BackBay. You can go to our website. It's www.bblsa.com. Um, there's some great content there on our white papers and podcasts. So if you just want to learn more about the industry, feel free to feel free to go to our website. Um, thanks again. Thank you.